exercise 185 page 466 question number 13 so this integral is to find the uh, electrostatic potential is it or the E normally stands for electric field so strength anyway we have to do this integral between naught and pi so it's some sort of wave function over naught between naught and pi and we can see we've got a sine in there and a cosine so how I'm going to proceed here is I'm going to, I need to look at this square root bit underneath here, call that to the power of half and bring it to the top, so it's minus a half. And if I look at what's inside this um, square root here, this bit, I'm going to think about letting that equal u. If I let that equal u, the a squared and the x squared will disappear because they're constants. Differentiating cos gives me the sine, so there's a good chance that at that point that will cancel out this sine theta at the top. I'm also going to let the a squared sigma over 3 epsilon, this bit here, come outside the integral because they're all constants, and call that k. So, with that in mind, you could try and proceed and see if you can do it, but the solution carries on below. So, I'm going to let k equal a squared sigma over 3 epsilon so I don't need to keep writing that and that can come outside the integral and I'm going, also going to rewrite the inverse square root as to the power minus a half so I can rewrite the integral as e equals the integral between naught and pi, I'm actually taking the k outside the integral, k integral between naught and pi of um, sine theta times a squared minus x squared minus 2ax cos theta to the power minus a half with respect to theta. So that's what I've got to do. And now I'm going to let u equal the bit inside the, the bracket there. Let u equal a squared minus x squared minus 2ax cos theta. So therefore du by d theta equals a squared and x squared disappear, cos becomes minus sine, so the whole thing becomes 2ax sine theta. Cos becomes minus sine and minus minus gives us a plus. Uh, rearranging for d theta, du over 2ax sine theta. So now putting this information into the integral, we have the integral that the E equals K integral between naught and pi sine theta times U to the minus a half times du over 2ax sine theta. The sine theta's cancel, which is what we want. Uh, the 2ax can come outside the integral. So E equals K over 2ax. And what I'm left with inside the integral between 0 and pi, u to the minus a half du, which is a standard integral. Add 1 to the power divide by the new power, we get E equals K over 2AX um, U to the half over a half between naught and pi. The 2 can come outside, a half divided by half times by 2, the 2 can come outside, which cancels the 2 underneath there already. So E equals K over AX, U to the half between naught and pi. Now what's U? 
u equals a squared minus x squared minus 2ax cos theta. So e equals k over ax. Um, u, which is a squared minus x squared minus 2ax cos theta. to the power of half or the square root of that between naught and pi. And um, every time I write this, I'm thinking that must be something to do with the cosine rule. <laughs> anyway, so putting the limits in now, theta equals pi and theta equals zero. And remembering that what the cosine wave looks like where um, that's a complete cycle from there to there so that's pi so cosine of pi is minus one and cosine of zero is one so with that information in mind that, that helps me put the limits in so e equals k over ax move this down a bit um, e equals k over ax um, just pause while I wrote that e equals k over ax bracket with pi put in the top limit and then zero put in the bottom limit that cos of pi is minus 1 and cos of 0 is 1 so putting that information in we get this e equals k over ax first bracket we just get minus minus 1 is plus 2ax minus a squared minus x squared minus 2ax so now we can do a bit of cancelling because a squared minus a squared is gone minus x squared minus minus x squared is plus x squared is gone and 2ax minus minus 2ax is plus 2ax so we finally end up with e equals k over ax times 4ax the a's cancel and the x's cancel so finally e equals 4k and looking back to see what we let k be we let k equal a squared sigma over 3 epsilon so putting this back in here e equals 4 a squared sigma over 3 epsilon looking at the solution in the textbook I see a bit of a schoolboy error right at the beginning which you probably spotted um, I put 3 epsilon in the original question and looking at the textbook it's actually 2 epsilon so that means this constant should have been a 2 epsilon underneath so if I now go back to the end here this should have been a 2 epsilon underneath here and so 4 divided by 2 gives us our 2 a squared sigma over 3 epsilon which still is not the answer in the textbook so there's an error somewhere I'm going to have to need to have a look at below. Now I can't see it on a quick look. If you can see this error, maybe you'd let me know.